Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to connect to our MySQL database from within a PHP script. Specifically, we're going to talk about, uh, or briefly talk about, what how the PHP uh, MySQL um, architecture works, basically how those two pieces of software interact. We're going to talk about something known as the MySQL I, or MySQL Improved Extension, that's provided and built into PHP that allows us to connect to a MySQL database from PHP. We're going to talk about the steps that you need to um, connect, to inter the steps you need to complete to interact with the MySQL database from PHP, which is going to include these four steps here that we're going to talk about in detail, which would be connecting to the database, actually running your SQL statement, processing any results uh, from running the statement, and then closing your connection to the database. So quickly, I just wanted to uh, mention about the PHP and MySQL architecture. Uh, basically, what we, we've been doing so far is we've been using our uh, MySQL monitor, which is a program running in our Windows, uh, Windows command prompt to connect to our MySQL database. Sometimes it's not the best artist. Sometimes it's drawn like that, which we know runs as a server on our local host. So what we do is we make a connection from the MySQL monitor uh, to, PH, I mean, to the MySQL database and then run our commands, such as we practiced where we learned about insert commands and select commands. Well, we basically need to have a way to issue those commands um, to MySQL from PHP as well. So basically what we have is, instead of this MySQL monitor, we're going to have a PHP script That's going to act. That's going to do something to access MySQL, and it's it has methods uh, that are going to be used to actually connect to the MySQL database. So what happens when a user requests a web page that has um, that accesses a MySQL database? You have a, a web client like Firefox, which sends an HTTP request as we know, to a web server, in this case, in XAMPP, Apache. Apache, you'll see that it's a PHP file. It'll go ahead and it'll invoke uh, the PHP interpreter. And the PHP interpreter is going to understand these commands that um, access MySQL. And behind the scenes, what it's going to be doing is actually going out and connecting to the MySQL database, just as we did over here with the MySQL monitor. Um, and so the way it set up is we've added sort of another piece to this uh, web architecture that we have. Instead of just a browser and Apache and, and PHP, uh, we've added this MySQL back <coughs> backend uh, that is directly uh, communicated with via PHP. And the way that uh, we're going to communicate with our MySQL database in PHP is using uh, an extension that's built into PHP by default. It's called MySQL I, which stands for MySQL Improved. Uh, it's an improved library for interacting with the MySQL database. Um, and basically, it's an extension uh, that in XAMPP is enabled by default. Uh, and the way you would enable it if it wasn't, just so you know, is um, php.ini uh, has configuration directives to install extensions. And actually, some of the extensions we've been using, uh, such as Mail, for example, are, um, have already been enabled in our php.ini file, and we haven't <coughs> specifically talked about them. But just so you know, um, they have a, a extension word with equal, and then you list the name, in this case, of a, um, of a DLL file, uh, because it's a Windows operating system that tells MySQL, basically, I mean, it tells PHP when it loads, um, when it loads the PHP configuration to also load this extension. So this extension here, php underscore mysql i dot dll, basically contains the um, software that's needed to connect to a MySQL database from PHP. Um, the extension provides both an object-oriented and procedural interface. Um, what that means is that you can use just simple function calls to connect to a database. For example, uh, in our file lib.php, we have defined just general user-defined functions that we call without um, having to uh, specify an object instance. So for example, um, we have like the get item function that we call in our code uh, just as such. Now if that was part of an object, we might call it like this, assuming it was a non-static method. 
So um, this extension provides a way to use either, um, either method. You can use just straight function calls or you can use the object-oriented method. In this class, we're going to be using the object-oriented interface. Um, and it's, we're going to be making use of two classes that are provided by this MySQL extension uh, to use this object-oriented interface. The first one is called uh, MySQL I. That's the name of the class. And that's actually going to represent a connection to the MySQL database. And we're going to use that to execute queries. Uh, there's also a class that we're going to be using called MySQL I underscore results, which basically represents uh, results you get back from running, for example, a select query on a database. Uh, in today's lesson, we're not going to be talking about uh, this this um, MySQL I class. We're going to talk about that in a lesson um, when we learn how to run select statements from PHP. Uh, but today, we are going to be introduced into uh, the MySQL I class. So um, basically, there are sort of four essential steps to connecting to a MySQL database from PHP um, that all involve sort of different function calls you have to make. Um, the first step that you do is you need to connect to the MySQL database, which is just like we did uh, from MySQL Monitor, uh, where we would type MySQL space, um, and then we provide our username and, <clears throat> and password and the database you want to select. Uh, we, we're going to do that same thing. Uh, we're going to do that <clears throat> using uh, this a MySQL I object, however. Um, so the first thing you do is you connect to the database. Then, then you basically run an SQL statement. You send a SQL statement to the MySQL server, which returns the results. Then you process any results from that particular statement. For example, if you are inserting an item, it, it will uh, send you, you'll be able to access the ID that was generated, for example, for a, a table that has an auto increment column. For a select statement, it'll return back a result set uh, that allows you to see all the different rows that met your um, search criteria. After you're done processing the results, then you just close the database connection. So you basically have an open and close um, function calls that are two steps in the process. And then you run, run your SQL command and then process the results. Now step three, which is the processing the results, is going to vary depending on whether you're using a, um, a select query or a non-select query, such as insert. Uh, because when you have a select query, it's actually going to return results to you. And as mentioned uh, briefly, we're going to talk about this in our, in our future lesson, uh, the MySQLI result class um, is what's returned when you execute a select query that allows you to basically um, parse through all the rows that are returned from a particular query. Um, and that process of doing that is a little bit different than when you have an insert query, for example, that doesn't actually return rows. It just um, basically lets you know whether the insert succeeded and possibly uh, whether an ID was generated. Uh, so in this lesson, um, we're just going to be actually talking about how to do uh, an insert statement um, and then how to process the results from that statement. So to connect to a database, um, the way, MySQL database, the way you do it is you simply create an instance of the MySQL object. Um, and you do that with its constructor. Its constructor takes, can take a number of parameters, the first four of which are the host name of the MySQL server you're trying to connect to, the username you'd like to connect as, the password associated with that user account to enable you to log in, and then uh, optionally the database name uh, for the database you're connecting to. So the way the code looks actually is, is just like this. Uh, we're creating a variable, in this case just called db to represent database connection. We're creating a new MySQL object. And then uh, in the constructor, we provide four arguments. Uh, in this case, they're underlined because these would be um, things, these would be strings that you would <coughs> insert on your own. So for host, you might provide, in our case, local host as the string. For username, you might provide PHP user, which is the account we set up. You provide whatever password you set up on your computer. And then uh, for, our, for our web store application, uh, we can pass it the database name advanced underscore PHP. So when you, <coughs> excuse me, when you uh, run this constructor or you in, uh, create an instance of this MySQL object, um, basically what it does is it's going to connect, try to connect to the MySQL server uh, at localhost using the username and password you provided and try to use the database um, that you requested. And assuming that that uh, successfully works, then that MySQLI object basically is what is what you're going to use 
to um, access and run queries on that MySQL database that you've just connected to. Um, one of the things that uh, you'll note here is that there's an at the error suppression at sign the error suppression operator before um, database because this will throw an error if there's a problem connecting to the database. For example, uh, maybe you provided the wrong username, you provided PHP user one, and it's not allowing you to connect. This will suppress the error, and what it allow you to do is handle it gracefully. So. Typically, after you um, try to connect to a MySQL database by calling this constructor, um, you'll test for connection errors. And the way that you can do that is this MySQL object that was created in this step here, you can test it. Um, it has two properties, connect underscore error number and connect underscore error. And basically, these are properties of this MySQL object that uh, provides status information about whether the connection was successful or not. Um, if the connection, it, connection error number is equal to zero, that means there, there was no problems connecting to the database. Um, connect error is a message um, that's provided if there was an error, and if there's no error, uh, it ends up being the empty string. So uh, a typical test that you might perform would be you would um, use the uh, instance of the MySQL object. You would access, for example, the connect error number property of that. Um, and if it's not equal to zero, which implies that there's an error, then you might do some error processing code. Maybe you'll log uh, a file, uh, log an error message to a file, or, or throw an exception. Um, so the typical process with connecting to the database is sort of two steps. You uh, create a new instance of the MySQLi object, and then you uh, perform a, conne um, a uh, connection error test to make sure that your connection was successful. Because if you don't successfully connect to the database, then the rest of the steps that we're going to need, such as trying to run queries and get result sets is not going to work because you don't have a valid connection to the database. So after you connect to the database, uh, basically what the second step that you're going to be performing is you're going to be um, running an SQL statement. So for example, for this particular lesson, we're going to talk about running an insert statement, which we learned about a few lessons ago. The way you do that is there's a method, object method called query that's um, a part of the MySQLi, MySQLi SQLi class. And basically what you do is you pass it a string that represents a valid SQL query, and then it goes ahead and it executes that query on the server and will return a result. Um, if you're running non-select queries, for example, an insert statement like in this lesson, um, if the query is successful, meaning the insert was succeeded, the method will return true. Um, if you're running a select query, as we'll see in an upcoming lesson, and the query was successful, it will return this MySQLi, MySQLi result object that's going to allow you to access all the rows that were returned from the select query. And then if there's an error with any of the different queries, um, it's going to return false. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, in our <clears throat> when we're using MySQLi monitor, for example, we always had to terminate our queries with a semicolon like this. Well, when we're creating a string to pass to the um, uh, query method of the MySQLi object, we don't actually need to include the semicolon. It, it handles that automatically for us. So for example, um, if we wanted to uh, run an insert query, let's say we have a, a random table here. It's, it could be any table name. Uh, let's say we want to insert, um, it has one column to which we're going to insert a value. Maybe it's just, it's just a primary key, so it's just an integer, for example. Well, we'd create a query that would say insert into, for example, um, people, and maybe the value we'd insert would be um, Joe Smith, for example. So we would create this uh, query string, making sure, especially on these um, quotation marks, actually, I should be in double quotes here, um, we should have this string value, uh, if it's a string value, enclosed in uh, single quotes. Remember that um, string values, when part of a SQL query, have to be uh, enclosed in quotation marks. So we basically would create this, this query string. And then the way we run it is we um, access the instance of the MySQLi object. We run the query method on it and pass it this query string um, that was defined here. Or you could even explicitly, instead of using this intermediate variable, just define it directly within the parentheses. It's um, options up to you. Uh, and what it does, and then we've stored the result of this in the variable called result. Uh, 
Now for an insert query, we're either going to get true or false. It's either going to, it was successful or it wasn't successful. Uh, and as mentioned, for a select query, we're going to get a MySQL results object. Uh, one thing I, I want to note also is that I'm referring to um, SQL, uh, an SQL command such as a, a select command is either as both a statement, a query, a command, they're all sort of synonyms for the same thing. Basically, whenever you hear me say um, a, my, a SQL um, command or a SQL statement or a SQL query, it's referring to any of the SQL statements that we've learned about for, for example, the insert and select um, that we've learned about. So even though select is technically what a query is, it's querying the database for information, uh, the, t the term query, will also, I'll also use that to refer to insert. So I might say uh, we executed an insert query on the database. So I just wanted to mention that so for um, you understand the nomenclature uh, as far as when I'm referring to these different things. And that's sort of uh, just commonplace uh, in the, the database world as well. You say I executed this query, I executed this statement, and so forth. Command is probably the least uh, used of, the, of all of them. So after we've uh, opened a connection to the database, We've uh, generated a query string and run the query on the database, and we've received our results back. We want to process the results. Um, for As mentioned, for non-select queries, like insert, no result set is turned, meaning no, no rows are returned from the database. Instead, we just get true or false. So how do we find out um, if our insert statement then, how do, how do we process the results of an insert uh, statement that was successful? Well, one of the things that the MySQLi object provides is it has a property called affected rows that um, gets updated anytime that you run a non-select query and what it does is it uh, it tells you the number of rows that were affected by the last um, SQL query that you ran so for example if we had immediately just run let's say we just ran that insert query that we saw on the last slide well we could immediately afterwards access the instance of our uh, MySQLi object access the affected rows property on value and test if it's equal to zero. Now because we expect our insert um, our, our insert statement to insert one um, one line, we would expect that it would not the number of rows affected would not be zero. Basically for an insert statement, the number of affected rows is how many rows that were inserted. So we could test that if it's equal to zero, um, then you could do some error processing code that would say there's an error, maybe you, you'll exit your program. Now note that we also could have um, just tested results to see if that returned false, to see if there was a failure with the query. Um, but maybe we, um, it's not something we're going to do in this course, but one thing that you might do is you might have multiple queries, um, multiple insert statements that you'd be submitting, um, and it might affect multiple rows. Maybe one of them doesn't work, but the other one does. Um, and then there are just other times where you want to know the number of, of rows that were um, added to the uh, table. And so we're going to be using this just to give you experience with using the affected rows. <coughs> Uh, property because it's something you'll see in code. And actually, when we learn about how to update rows in a database and delete rows in a database, we're going to be using that affected rows property as well. One other thing uh, specific to insert statements is if you're inserting a row into a table with an auto increment column, for example, in our items table, we have the item IDs and auto increment column. So every time we insert a row into the database, it um, basically increments the last item ID generated and generates that for that row. Um, well, the way you, we, what we can do is if we've run an insert statement with the table with the auto increment column, we can access that insert ID that was generated. So, for example, when we insert an item to the database, we're going to want to know what um, item ID it was um, or what item ID it was given. The way you can do that is there's another property that's part of the MySQLi object, and it's called insert underscore ID. Uh, and basically, that can be used to access whatever ID was automatically uh, generated for uh, the last insert statement that was executed. So after, um, let's say we run our insert statement, we've checked it, we've checked and verified that at least one a row was inserted. Uh, then immediately afterwards, we can go and access the um, MySQLi object instance, access the insert ID property, and maybe we store it in a variable called row ID. Now row ID is basically going to hold the ID that was generated for the last row that we inserted into the table. Um, so for uh, insert statements, non-select statements, uh, processing is typically going to involve processing the results is typically going to involve um, testing whether the appropriate number of rows were inserted or as we'll learn updated or deleted. And then also for insert statements, um, gathering the insert ID that was generated for <coughs> uh, a new row inserted into a table.
So we've opened the database, we've run a query, uh, we've been able to process the results to it. The final step in basically accessing MySQL from PHP is to close the connection to the database. Uh, so after any queries have been run and, and, pro and the data processed, uh, any results processed using a, a MySQLI object, um, we're going to close the connection. And the way that you do that is there's an object method in the MySQLI class called not surprisingly close. Uh, and basically it's a method that just closes that connection to the database, uh, which is something you should always do um, when you have an open connection as far as it helps save resources. You don't want to have numerous open connections to a database. Um, so basically what happens is, is when you uh, want to close the connection, you simply access the instance object of a MySQL instance object. You call the close method on it. And it's going to return true or false, just letting you know whether or not the connection was successfully closed or not. A uh, common thing you can do is you can test to see if the connection was closed successfully by testing this, uh, in this case, this variable closed. And then do whatever er error processing you might want to do, such as logging error saying there was a problem closing a connection to the database, uh, and so forth. Uh, one thing to note, important thing to note, is that um, to access the affected rows and insert ID, properties of this MySQLI object, um, you have to do that before the close method is called. So if we call um, db arrow close, and then we try to um, find out the number of rows that were affected by the last query, we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, so that's an important thing to, to notice. So we've talked about these four steps. Let's see what they all actually look like in a real piece of uh, PHP code. So uh, one thing that I've already done is um, I've uh, opened up a command prompt so that we can look at the MySQL monitor so that we can see uh, when we insert, we're, what we're going to be doing in this, in this example script is inserting an item into our items table. Um, so I have the MySQL monitor up so that we can see um, the items in the database and, and verify that the item <coughs> that we try to add was added to the database. So for example, if I run the um, uh, select query from the items table as it is right now before we've run any scripts and I'm just pulling up the item ID name and price because that's all that fits on the screen we can see that there are six items or six default items in the database currently so what we can do is um, we have a script the practice script or the example script that we have is called insert item .php. and basically what it's going to do is going to go through the four steps that we just went over to insert an item into our item database, into our items table of our uh, advanced PHP database. So the first step, step one that we learned about was open a connection to the database. So here we're creating a new instance of the MySQL uh, class. We pass it the host name, the username, password, and database that we want to use. Um, and notice here that uh, this is in plain text, uh, our password, uh, which may not be typically something you wouldn't want to do um, in the real world. But just for the purpose of this example, um, to not get into the details of that, we're just going to um, put it as plain text. So we have educator as our password. Um, the other thing is that we notice we have the error suppression operator here. So if this throws an error, um, it won't get output, uh, and we can handle it gracefully. We have a test to see if a connection error has occurred. We basically test um, the connect error number property on our MySQLI object. And if it's uh, not equal to zero, which means an error has occurred, then we're going to output an error message and exit the script. Um, in this particular case, the error message, or as we learned, the error message um, when an error occurs is, is stored in the property connect underscore error. So if an error does occur, we're just going to output the, the message stored in that um, <coughs> class property. So assuming we open our connection to the database, everything is successful, then we're going to run our SQL statement. Uh, so we create an insert query that's basically saying, um, insert item into the items table a new row. Um, we're passing it null so that it'll, as we know that that will generate, <clears throat> that will trigger MySQL to auto generate an ID for this new item. We're giving it the name new item. We're giving it a price $24.99. Uh, we're giving it a simple item description and then we're giving it image file extension JPEG. Notice um, another thing to, to, or to reemphasize is that any string um, data that we include in SQL queries needs to be enclosed in quotation marks. So here we've enclosed the name, the description, and the image file to extension um, all within uh, single quotes. And so because we're including the single quotes here, we've actually include, uh, included the whole query string within double quotes uh, because in PHP, as we know, that allows you to include single quotes without having to escape them. 
Um, and then basically what we're going to do is we're going to run this insert query that we've generated. And we do that using the um, query method. Now, if you'll notice here that we actually haven't stored the results of the query um, in this particular case, um, because it's an insert, even though that's something you, you can do, we're not actually going to be testing um, to see if it returned true or false or not. We're going to be using the number of affected rows um, to test whether it was true or false or not. So in this case, we're not actually um, uh, storing the result. Now, when we run a select statement, we're definitely going to be doing that because we're going to be, that's going to, how we're going to get our result set returned to us. So here we run the query, and then we're going to process uh, as step three the query results. So basically what we test is this affected rows um, property of the MySQLi class that's going to have the number of affected rows from the last query that was run. We're going to test to make sure that only one row is inserted. We've only, ins we've only had one insert um, statement that we did. And if it's not equal to one, then we're going to output an error message uh, saying, OK, there is an error inserting the item and exit the script. If that all goes well, um, what we're going to do is, uh, assuming that it was one row that was inserted, then basically we're going to output a message that says um, the item added was assigned the item ID. And then we're going to access this insert ID property of our MySQLI class to get that insert ID that was generated for the new row in the items table. And we're just going to output that to the user. As step four, and um, we're going to close the database connection, you notice that this echo statement um, actually is up here because in order to access this insert ID um, class property, as mentioned, it needs to be accessed before uh, the database is closed. So uh, down here, we have our final step in accessing the MySQL database, which is calling the close method on our uh, MySQLi object. And then we simply test to make sure whether the connection was successfully closed or not. Uh, and output an error message if, if there wasn't. So if we go to this script in our browser, it's called insertitem.php, and we click on the uh, script as is, we're going to see that item added was added to the uh, items table successfully, and it was assigned the item ID 1007. So if we go and run our, quer our select query again from MySQL Monitor, we can see that, in fact, the item, a new item was added, and it was given the ID 1007, as it had stated. Now, just to show you how, to, how some of these error mechanisms work, let's say that, um, for example, we misspelled our username. We tried to log in as PHP user 1. Well, that's going to do is that's going to generate a connection error. It's, um, we're going to suppress that error, uh, but we're going to be able to access uh, if an error occurred using, um, by testing the connect error number property of the MySQLi class, and then we're going to output an error message. Uh, so if we go ahead and save this and reload the page, we're going to get the error message that was generated um, by MySQL, which is saying uh, access was denied for PHP 1 user at localhost. And that makes sense because, um, as mentioned, we, we had an incorrect username. So let's say we correct the username, but then maybe we have an error in our query. Let's say we misspell values. And then uh, what's going to happen is, is that the number of affected rows is not going to be equal to 1 because the query is going to fail. So we're gonna, we should be able to get this message. There was an error inserting the item. Now, if we refresh the page, there was an error inserting the item. Um, so as even though there's sort of four steps that are in the process, four main steps, open a connection, run the query, process the results, and close the connection, um, there are sort of little sub-steps that go a long way that are important for uh, good application development, which involves uh, basically testing things along the way, testing to make your, sure that your connection uh, was achieved, Tech, checking to make sure that your query was run successfully and then uh, also checking to make sure that the connection was closed. So this is sort of a script that basically sums up all of those four steps for running an insert statement uh, from PHP. So the homework challenge for today is going to be, I'm going to have you mimic sort of what we did in class today. I'm going to have you create a um, new table called people in the advanced PHP database, and this is a uh, couple reasons for this. One is it'll allow us to run this example. Two, it'll give you a little more practice um, using the create table command. So I want you to create a table called people uh, that contains three columns, one called person ID, one called name and age that represent uh, the person ID is going to be a primary key, which is going to be a, uh, an auto incremented um, primary key column. Uh, name is going to represent the full name of the uh, per of a person. This database is just going to hold people that have names and ages. 
and then age is going to be an unsigned integer um, that holds the age of the person. For the name, I want you to use a variable length um, string data type, uh, which is you should remember is a var uses varcar data type. And then you can set some sort of maximum limit on it as to whatever you think would be reasonable for the full name. I'll let, leave that up to you. Then what you need to do is uh, create a web form called insertperson.html that basically has two input text boxes, um, one where you can enter the person's name and one where you can enter the age. And then basically have this HTML form submit that information. You can do post or get, whatever, whatever you want, to insertperson.php. Um, now this insert, and actually a typo here, I should say insert person. So in this insert person.php script, basically what I want you to do is, um, well, the, the script itself is going to try and insert this person into this person people table uh, in our database. The way you're going to do that is you're going to have it create an insert statement um, from the form data that was provided by either get or post, um, and make sure it's a well-formed insert statement. Make sure that any strings you have within your SQL statement are properly enclosed in quotation marks uh, and just generate a valid insert statement. Then run the insert query which is going to give you, uh, you're going to have to use the query method of our MySQL I object. Um, the other thing to mention is that as part of um, the first thing that you have to do is, is that you're also uh, going to have to create that MySQL I object to get the connection of the database. So you're going to need to provide the host name, the username, the password and uh, the database, advanced PHP. Uh, then I want you to check the affected rows property to make sure that one row was inserted into the database to test to make sure, for example, that the query worked, uh, that you didn't have any errors in your query. Then output uh, the insert ID that was generated for that new row, and that's going to end up being the person ID of this new person uh, object that you've added to the database. Um, and so that'll just uh, give you practice accessing the insert ID uh, property. And then um, go ahead and close the connection to the database uh, using the close method. A uh, couple things is to make sure that you test uh, for a successful connection initially using, uh, you can either use connect error number to test if it's not equal to zero, or you can use connect error to uh, test for an empty string. If that error is equal to empty the string, that means that no error was in, encountered. Um, and just do some proper error checking. Uh, and then also just check that close was um, uh, properly occurred and output an error message if the close operation failed. And then just as mentioned, uh, make sure you properly quote uh, any string values uh, within your insert query. So that ends today's lesson. Thank you for watching educator.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.